Can a Muslim be wealthy and rich? Absolutely yes. I begin with a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. He said, the hand that gives is better than the hand that begs and receives. In other words, financial independence is better than financial dependence. And start with your dependence first in who you give and spend on. Abu Huraira said, who are our financial dependents? He said, your wife your children, and anyone who is dependent on you for their livelihood. You start with them first from your wealth before anyone else. He also said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best type of charity is from what is left over beyond one's financial needs, meaning your savings and profit. After what you spend on yourself, your wife, your children, your dependents, whatever's left over that you don't need for your family and your livelihood, your shelter, your clothing, your food, your security, and so on, left over, the best charity you can give is from that. He goes on, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever is able to not need to ask from others, Allah will make him unneedy. Then he says, whoever is satisfied with what they have, Allah will bless their wealth and their wealth will increase. Or it also means, whoever relies on their abilities, Allah bless them with and seeks financial independence, Allah will assist him in his seeking and his efforts. A Muslim should be financially independent as much as they can. If they're not yet, then to seek it and to work and not sit and wait and use justifications and excuses that Allah is going to provide them with without moving and also not to beg and ask and get out of that habit and also that your family and dependents are more worthy come in priority and it is haram to neglect them even in the name of charity to others and that the best charity is to your dependents first and then the next best charity is what's left over of your wealth to others and that obligation towards your family is a charity you get rewarded for. Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu says to the Prophet peace be upon him who are those you said are the dependents or messenger of Allah and he said your wife so that your wife does not say my husband, you have neglected me, so leave me. I can't live with you. Or your child says, O oh father, you have left me barren and vulnerable. Where do I go? These are the words of the Prophet Allah says in the Quran, in Surah number 4, verse 9, in Surah An-Nisa, He says, فليتقوا الله وليقولوا قولا سديدا. And let them fear those who, if they would themselves leave behind helpless children, they would surely have been fearful on their account. Let them then fear Allah and make the right statement. What does this verse mean? Allah is telling us that there is a legitimate fear of poverty upon your children and your family if you were to die and leave them behind with no financial resources or wealth that they can look after themselves when you die. There is a misconception among Muslims where they say Allah will provide them. It is absolutely true that Allah will provide them. But Allah also has already provided us these resources and the ability to work and He commanded us to do that. So anything which Allah commands us to do, it means we take some of that responsibility and the responsibility is to do our part. In the end, if Allah provides you from it or doesn't, that's in the hands of Allah. And everyone's provision is written, but you have to still work towards it. And even your working towards it is written. Allah facilitates everything fairly and justly. And the meaning of this verse is that some people, before they die, they want to donate and give in charity all their wealth. Or they start giving their wealth to certain people than others. Or they name it for some of their children rather than others. Or they hide it or whatever it is, Allah is telling them, let them fear that they leave behind an offspring who will be barren and vulnerable. So fear Allah. Do you understand? Allah did not say, give your wealth away and don't worry about your children, I will provide them. No, no, no. Providing comes in two ways. That Allah provides you without you asking and He also provides you with you doing the effort. The Hadith Prophet is very clear. He says, Allah will assist the person when they do the effort. Inheritance, therefore, is important. And how can you leave behind wealth for your children and family if you yourself are not wealthy? Another misconception is people think that the Prophet ﷺ liked to be poor or that he was poor. This is wrong. Rasul neither liked poverty nor was he poor. But Rasul chose 
to have only the minimum finances for himself and his family and he always gave it away. He chose to be an ascetic. Why? Because he's the role model and he's the messenger of Allah. Listen to this amazing dua of a great companion named Sa'd ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu. Sa'd ibn Ubadah is also a promised paradise and he was one of the Ansar among the early Muslims and he was a leader and a chief of one of the tribes of Medina. He says, Oh Allah, grant me honor and value and I cannot have honor and value without action and giving. And there cannot be any action and giving without financial resources. Oh Allah, limited financial resources do not make me adequately functionable. They don't suit me. And I cannot adequately function without having abundance in wealth. It's very clear. And you know what? As a result of that dua, Sa'd ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu, listen carefully. Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he migrated from Mecca to where? To Medina. How long did he spend in Medina? 10 years. So each year, let's say 365 days. How many days would 10 years be? 3,650 days approximately. Do you know what Sa'd ibn Ubadah did as a result of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting him that wealth and that dua? He used to gift the Prophet peace be upon him a gift every day. Sometimes a shoulder of a lamb, sometimes a, a goat, sometimes something else. Every single day for 10 years, he gifted him 3,650 gifts. How? because he was able financially. Now, if that's what he did for the Prophet ﷺ, imagine what he did for his people, for his family, for the Muslims, for the community. You know the 10 promised paradise among the companions. Did you know that seven out of those 10 were extremely wealthy? Among them was Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu. We all have heard about Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, how wealthy and powerful he was. Did you know that scholars have estimated in today's US currency, of how much approximately Abdul Rahman ibn Awf had in dinars compared to today's modern world. They estimated his wealth to be at least 800 million US dollars. So was Uthman radiallahu anhu, ibn Affan, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu, all of them. Ali radiallahu anhu started off poor and he married Fatima radiallahu anha, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they were extremely poor and it was very hard for them. He was quite young. And one day he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, I'm suffering from poverty. He waited and the man came in and gave some donations of a few dirhams. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received this. And what did he give Ali radiallahu anhu? He gave him one dirham, one. And he said, go to the market and buy yourself such and such dates or whatever. And then go and sell them for a profit of such and such. Then take that profit and bring it back to me. He went and did exactly as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He came back with some profit. He said, now take it again and buy this or that and sell it again and make some profit. And again and again until he had enough for his family to last him for a little while. And so Ali radiallahu anha began a business of profit. So a Muslim invests, a Muslim profits, a Muslim gets into trade and business if they can. A Muslim educates themselves. A Muslim reads books about how to invest in business. A Muslim reads about the boundaries that Islam has placed in how to invest in a halal way and what is haram. In how to earn your wealth in halal and what is haram in how to spend it in halal, be wealthy as wealthy as you like. But don't forget Allah's right. Some people say, well, what about the verses in the Quran? Abundance has made you heedless. You might say, huh, there you go. The verse of the Quran is warning us not to have abundance of wealth because it makes us heedless. No, no, no. Read it again. Allah is not saying abundance makes you heedless. He's saying your accumulation of your abundance has changed you so that you became heedless because of it. So therefore, it's not the wealth. It's how you looked at wealth, how you approached wealth, not that wealth makes you heedless. Wealth makes you more powerful. You have a more say in government, politics, in the economy of a country, in your say, in your influence on powerful people. Yes, that is true. And that is why I always encourage the Muslim communities that we need to always work together to find ways of employing one another, making resources available for each other, to help each other grow, train each other, assist one another so our community can grow and be strong, powerful, independent financially and not need anybody.